Hello guys and welcome back to coding the Conway's Game of Life in Ruby. Um, I think you guys can give yourselves a round of applause because we are over halfway done. Uh, we have coded the foundations of our game uh, and we have tested them with the TDD. Um, we can now create a new a gaming world uh, that is populated with cells which are both alive and dead which is awesome but now we have to make these cells interact um, by following each of the four rules so the next step is to start coding these uh, rules which we begun which we have begun uh, a few videos ago um, and just take it from there so uh, we have we began writing our first rule and took a little detour to to create this game class properly but now we should finish finish our our, our rule number one so um, let us just remind ourselves rule number one says that any life cell with fewer than two life neighbors dies and we begin here by testing uh, that under these under the context of rule number one um, it should kill a life cell with one life neighbor so let's write our test for it uh, let's write our firstly our game object so game equals game dot new and very similarly to the line for 74 here we're going to write the first line of our test here so we're again going to pass in a world object and pass in this array of empty cells but within this array we are just going to pass coordinates for one cell okay mm, so far for one cell oh, oh, actually for two cells because we're testing um, killing a live cell with one live neighbor so we're going to have two cells okay and um, how we're going to go about this so we have this gaming world which is pre-populated and now when this game changes its state when it evolves and we're going to call this evolving thingy tick so we're going to write this something like game dot tick with an exclamation mark which in Ruby uh, often describes um, a method with which changes this object uh, permanently so when the game ticks over um, both of these cells should be dead but let's just uh, clarify which cells exactly are are these two cells um, which with which we pre-populate this world okay so this is cell 1 and 0 uh, 1 and 0 1 is the index of 1 meaning this and 0 meaning this so it is this cell okay and this 2 0 um, specify these cells so these two cells are, are the one we're looking here and both of these cells have fewer than two life neighbors and both of these cells should be dead when the world when the game ticks over so we're going to have something like um, world that cell grid uh, one and zero should be dead okay and the same thing for the other cell which is designated by numbers two and zero let us just um, run our tests to see where are we failing and we are failing on this undefined method tick okay um, that is perfectly within reason because we haven't not defined it but um, before we do that um, we should take a closer look at at this rule which is saying any life cell with fewer than two alive neighbors dies and we do not uh, at the current state know how many neighbors uh, thus does a cell have so first first off before we implement this ticking of a game we should implement a counting of neighbors because all of the four rules of the game of life uh, rely on detection of neighbors okay so let's start writing um, the counting of the neighbors so 
uh, let's first look at where are we going to count these neighbors. Uh, it makes sense for me at least to to make this counting of neighbors within this world class. So let's go over in our RSpec file and within a context of a world um, let us create the counting of neighbors method. Okay, So uh, subject should respond to proper methods. It should respond to uh, neighbors. Okay, it should respond to neighbors. And let us um, run just this test under the line 16, so we do not get confused. So we're running this test 16, and uh, our world doesn't respond to neighbors, which is perfectly fine because we do not have it. So let us define it. Define a neighbors and Okay, and this a test is now passing. And right now we do not have anything under this neighbors, and we should we should think about what we are going to do here. We are going to return an array of cells which are neighboring to our to the cells we are looking at. Okay, so this neighbors class, uh, oh, sorry, method should have an argument of class okay so we should rename this neighbors method neighbors around cell okay and pass in a cell which we want to which we wish to examine okay mm, and now this is our new starting point okay so let's first off uh, comment this renamed um, method that we have here. And let us test it using, using our usual TDD methods. Um, run our specs which are failing. I uh, actually do not know how to how to test this so this is a first for me also. Oh okay. This is a first for me also. Mm. So neighbors run cell. What happens if I pass in a cell argument? Get a whole bunch, bunch of errors. Okay. So why is that? It should respond to neighbors around cell. Okay. So what happens if I delete this cell and bring this back in? Okay. And test. Okay. So I have just discovered. <laughs> that you do not have to pass in an argument here for this subject to respond to this method, which is awesome. Okay. Mm, so this is going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to expand on this. So see you in the next video.